Welcome back. Today we will determine several space flight quantities. These include the appropriate launch time of a spacecraft so that it may rendezvous with Mars, the flight time to Mars, the wait time on Mars before return to Earth is possible, and the return time to Earth. We will find that a crewed mission to Mars with uh, return to Earth will last a minimum of 2,66 Earth years. This is because Mars and Earth must be properly aligned so that a spacecraft may reach the orbit of Mars at the same time when Mars also arrives at the rendezvous region. We will determine three times, including one flight time between the planets and two wait times before launch, one on Earth and the other on Mars. The calculations of these two wait times will look similar, but there will be subtle and important differences. We know the reference period of time that it would take a spacecraft to fly from Earth to the orbit of Mars. This is approximately 8,63 months, which corresponds to 258,89 days. Only at specific times can a flight to Mars initiate. This is because we have to wait until Earth and Mars are properly aligned before launch in order to ensure that when the spacecraft arrives at the orbit of Mars, the red planet itself is also reaching that region, so that the spacecraft may enter Mars's orbit. If the spacecraft left when the planets are not properly aligned, it would not rendezvous with Mars. Earth and Mars orbit the Sun on elliptical orbits that are nearly circular with the Sun at one of the foci of these two ellipses. Since Earth is closer to the Sun than Mars, our planet will complete one orbit in less time than Mars completes one of its orbits around the Sun. It takes 365,256 Earth days for our planet to complete one orbit with one day defined as a period of time of exactly 24 Earth hours. Likewise, one hour is defined as a period of time of exactly 60 minutes, and one minute is a period of time of exactly 60 seconds. We know that one Earth year is defined as 365 days, but it takes an additional 0,256 days approximately one quarter of a day for Earth to complete an orbit. As a consequence, over four years, Earth would then be one full day behind the completion of a full orbit. And this is why every four years we have a leap year, thus we add one day to February. Mars, instead, takes 686,98 Earth days to complete a full orbit. As a result, Mars and Earth will continuously occupy different positions with respect to each other. Well, it follows that the spacecraft may only be launched at very specific times of the year for it to reach Mars. Let's talk about the wait time on Earth before launch to Mars. And let's determine such time. We will proceed in two phases. In the first phase, we will determine the relative angular position of Mars with respect to Earth, so that when the spacecraft launches from Earth in such position, it will indeed rendezvous with Mars. Based on this relative angular position, in the second phase, we will then determine the wait time, also known as the launch window. As the orbits of Earth and Mars are nearly circular, the estimates of the needed relative angular positions are obtained by using constant angular speeds omega m and omega e for the orbits of these two planets. 
Since Earth is faster than Mars and the spacecraft is faster than Earth, then Mars should be ahead of Earth at launch time, and hence Earth should be behind Mars. Let theta ML and theta EL be the angular positions of Mars and Earth at launch time. That's the reason for the L. For Mars ahead of Earth, then theta ML minus theta EL will be positive. From Earth at an angle theta equals theta EL, the spacecraft will fly by an angle of 180 degrees, that is pi, by design. Mars will correspondingly fly by an angle that is equal to 180 degrees minus theta ML minus theta EL, since Mars will be ahead of Earth. This angle must be equal to the angle flown by Mars from theta ML in its orbit during the period of time of exactly 258.89 days. That's the flight time of the spacecraft. In order for Mars and the spacecraft to rendezvous at the end of the flight of the spacecraft. The angle flown by Mars in this flight time equals exactly omega m times the delta T L. It thus follows that pi, 180 degrees, minus theta m L minus theta E L must equal exactly omega m times delta T L. Thus we find that theta ML minus theta EL must equal pi minus omega M times delta TL. In terms of numerical quantities, for Mars we have that omega M equals exactly 0, 0,522 etc. degrees per day. And so if we take delta TL to be exactly equal to 258,89 days, then we find that the difference in the two angles, theta ML minus theta EL, is exactly equal to 44,562 degrees. This is the angle by which Mars must be ahead of Earth for proper launch alignment. This is a reference estimate based on the simplification that uh, omega m, the angular speed of mass, is approximately constant and the flight time equals exactly a delta TL of 258,89 days. Based on the constant angular speed omega m and omega e for the orbit of Earth and Mars, the corresponding expressions for the angular positions theta m and theta e of these two planets are then found to be the following ones. Theta m equals theta m naught plus omega m times time, the flight time, and Theta E equals theta E naught plus omega E times exactly the same flight time T. In these expressions, theta M naught and theta E naught are exactly the angular positions of the planets at the moment we wish to calculate the launch window. Additionally, T is the time from that particular moment. Earth is faster than Mars and may be ahead of Mars for some theta e at some time of the year. In this case, when Earth further travels one or more complete orbits beyond theta e, it would then reach the needed launch position behind Mars. Any number n of complete orbits is expressed as 2 pi times n, that is to say, 
uh, 2 pi uh, equals uh, 360 degrees, and that equals the angle of one complete orbit. Expression 2 then generalizes to the following. Theta e plus 2 pi times n will be equal to theta e naught plus omega e times time. The angular position of mass with respect to Earth is obtained by subtracting equation 3 from equation 1. When we do this, we obtain the following result. Theta m minus theta e minus 2 pi times n will equal theta m naught minus theta e naught plus omega m minus omega e, that difference times the time t. The relative angular position theta m minus theta e of Mars with respect to Earth then is obtained as follows. Theta m minus theta e equals 2 pi times n plus theta m naught minus theta e naught plus omega m minus omega e times t. From this expression, we can determine the wait time to launch indicated by TL. This is done by setting the difference theta m minus theta e to equal the expression of the needed relative angular configuration theta ml minus theta el, which we determined before. Let's calculate TL based on the positions of Earth and Mars on a representative date of exactly April 12th, 2023. From NASA's uh, horizon system, we find the following. On that day, theta m naught was equal to 135,22 degrees. Theta E naught was equal to 202,01 degrees. So Mars on that day was behind Earth instead of ahead as is needed. So let's set N equal to 1. The related wait time is then obtained to be equal to TL equals 537,46 days. That corresponds to 1,4715 years from April 12th, 2023, which corresponds to a launch date of October 3rd, 2024. If we pick n equals 2, we find from result number 4 that TL equals 1,315,80 days. That is another 778,34 days, which corresponds to 2,131 Earth years after October 3rd, 2024. Hence, a mission to Mars may not initiate at any time, but only every 778,3386 days or 2,131 years. We are now going to calculate the wait time on Mars before the return to Earth is possible. By the time the spacecraft reaches Mars, Earth will have traveled ahead of the red planet. Before initiating a voyage back to Earth, the crew will have to wait a specific period of time on Mars until Earth and Mars are properly aligned for a return voyage. An immediate return from Mars to Earth upon arrival on Mars would not be feasible because the craft could not reach Earth. It could only reach the orbit of Earth. This is because upon departure from Mars, the spacecraft would leave with an angular velocity that is smaller than that of Earth because the angular velocity of Mars is smaller than that of Earth and only a limited amount of power is available to the craft to accelerate. So, let's determine the wait time on Mars before a return flight may begin. 
we will proceed in two phases. In the first phase, we will determine the relative angular position of Mars with respect to Earth so that when the spacecraft launches from Mars in such position, it will rendezvous with Earth. Based on this relative angular position in the second phase, we will then determine the wait time on Mars. Since Mars is lower than Earth, then Earth should be behind Mars for a spacecraft from Mars to rendezvous with Earth. As before, let theta ML and theta EL be the angular positions of Mars and Earth at launch time. For Earth behind Mars, then the difference theta ML minus theta EL will be positive. From Mars at theta EM, the spacecraft will fly by an angle of 180 degrees, which equals pi, by design. Earth will correspondingly fly by an angle of 180 degrees plus theta ML minus theta EL since again Earth must be behind Mars. This angle must equal the angle flown by Earth from theta EL on its orbit. During the period of time delta TL, which equals uh, uh, to 258,89 days, which is the flight time of the spacecraft, in order for Earth and the spacecraft to rendezvous at the end of the return flight of the spacecraft. The angle flown by Earth in this flight time equals exactly omega e times delta t l. It follows then that pi plus theta m l minus theta e l must equal omega e times delta t l. Hence, theta ML minus theta EL will equal omega E times delta TL minus pi. Let's perform some calculations. For Earth, omega E equals 0, 0,98, etc. degrees per day. For a delta TL of 258,89 days, we find that theta ML minus theta EL equals 75,120 degrees. This is the angle by which Earth must be behind Mars for proper launch alignment. This is a reference estimate. It is based on the simplifications that omega e is approximately constant and delta t l equals 258,89 days. Based on the constant angular speeds omega m and omega e for the orbits of Earth and Mars, as previously shown, the corresponding expressions for the angular positions theta m and theta e of the planets are theta m equals theta m naught plus omega m times time and theta e equals theta e naught plus omega e times time t. In these expressions, t is now the time that is measured from the moment the spacecraft reaches Mars. At this moment, theta m naught and theta e naught are now the new initial angular positions of the planets. At this moment, as we have already stipulated, Mars will have achieved the new angular position of theta m naught equals 180 degrees, which equals pi. And that is with respect to the angular position of Earth at the beginning of the flight to Mars. With respect to this same angular position of Earth, the new angular position of Earth will equal the angle flown by Earth during the delta T L time of 258,89 days of flight time. Therefore, Theta E naught will equal omega E times delta T L. 
which equals 255,12 etc. degrees, which in turn equals 4,45 etc. radians. Earth is faster than Mars and may be ahead of Mars for some, say that E, at some time of the year. Well, in this case, when Earth further travels one or more complete orbits beyond theta e, it would then reach the needed launch position behind Mars. Any number n of complete orbits is expressed as, well, 2 pi n, where 2 pi again equals 360 degrees, which is the angle of one complete orbit. Expression 3, then, generalizes to theta e plus 2 pi n equals theta e naught plus omega e times time t. That's expression number 5. The angular position of Mars with respect to Earth is obtained by subtracting expression 5 from expression 3. And doing this gives us the following result. Theta m minus theta e minus 2 pi n will equal theta m naught minus theta e naught plus omega m minus omega e times t. The relative angular position theta m minus theta e of Mars with respect to Earth is then obtained in the following manner. Theta m minus theta e equals 2 pi n plus theta m naught minus theta e naught plus omega m minus omega e times t, which is time. From this expression, we can determine the wait time to launch TL by setting theta m minus theta e equal to the expression of the needed relative angular launch configuration theta ml minus theta el, which we determined before. The related wait time is calculated as tl equals 453,51 etc. days, and that corresponds to 1,242 years. With n equals 2, we find from result number 6 that tl equals 1,000 231,850 days, that is another 778,34 days, which equals 2,131 years before a return voyage may commence. Once on Mars, accordingly, a crew must wait 1,242 years for the first window of opportunity to return to Earth. After that, a voyage home is visible every 2,131 years. Let's now calculate the minimum total time of a crewed mission to Mars and return to Earth. Well, based on the previous results, we conclude that the minimum total time of a crewed mission to Mars equals 2,66 years, which is equal to 971,286 days. This total results from the sum of the flight time to Mars, which equals 258,887 days, that corresponds to 8,63 months, a wait time of Mars for the earliest return flight opportunity, which equals 453,512 days or 1,242 years and the return flight time, which equals 258,887 days, which equals another 8,63 months. This means that support resources, including provisions, must be available to the crew on Mars either dispatched from Earth ahead of time, or developed on Mars, or a combination of both. We have calculated that a total mission to Mars takes several months, 
But why is that? Could we not reach Mars more rapidly? Technically, the answer is yes, but that would require a lot more resources in terms of power and batteries and fuel on a spacecraft. Although technologically possible, that would be incredibly expensive. So the flight takes these many months because in essence, the flight of a spacecraft from Earth to Mars is due to the Sun itself taking the spacecraft from Earth to Mars in exactly the same way as ships in the 16th and 17th century sailed propelled by the wind without any engines. In this case, spacecraft reach Mars from Earth propelled simply by the force of gravity of the Sun. In so doing, we are able to plan missions to Mars using relatively smaller spacecraft. In the next video, we will determine the flight of a spacecraft within the sphere of influence of Earth. Thank you very much. Goodbye, Dankeschön und auf Wiedersehen.